Hello everyone, my name is Barbara Eichhorst. I'm a hematologist and consultant at the University Hospital of Cologne in Germany and I welcome you here from the EHA 2025 um, from the wonderful city of Milan and um, we are recording this here for the Ask the Expert session. Um, so one of the questions which was submitted is considering the progression-free survival benefit of adding ibrutinib to venetoclax obinutuzumab within the CL13 Gaia trial, would you consider using this triple combination in first-line treatment of patients with a CLL or specific subgroups? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, Arnon Kater from Moritz Wissner presented the data here yesterday and indeed there is a 12% difference by adding ibrutinib now after more than five years observation time um, in comparison to venetoclax obinutuzumab only. However, um, the reason why I still wouldn't use it in clinical practice is that on the first hand, we don't see a difference in the overall survival. And we also see on the other hand, more toxicities. We see more infections with a triple combination, more cardiac comorbidities. And also when we look at quality of life, we see at least that during the treatment, patients has related quality of life um, is improving only when patients finish the triple treatment. Um, I think a subgroup which may benefit from that, but they were excluded from the Gaia trial, are patients with TP53 aberration, deletion 17P. Um, we did a phase two trial on those patients also showing promising results. I think this may be justified in this group of patients to use the regimen. Otherwise, even in patients with unmutated IDHV status, that's where we saw most of the benefit of the triplet treatment. And um, considering that many of them still have a very good prognosis, I would still not use it um, from the beginning. The only subgroup which may benefit are patients with high complex karyotype, where we have seen that um, the triplet is working here very effectively. And even patients with genetic lax obinutuzumab do have a shorter PFS when they have a five or more chromosomal operation. So the next question is coming from Dr. Wang uh, from the Mayo Clinic um, and he says he's curious to know thoughts on the acalabrutinib venetoclax or acalabrutinib venetoclax obinutuzumab frontline CLL therapies when to use these regimens as opposed to venetoclax obinutuzumab or BTKI continuous treatment. Um, very excellent question, difficult to answer because we will we are waiting here for study results for the comparison of continuous PTKI versus a double oral therapy. We're waiting for the results from the CL17 trial comparing ven venetoclax ibrutinib versus ibrutinib. We will have the results end of the year and for VG venetoclax obinutuzumab versus AV and um, the magic study from the Dana Farber Cancer Institute and um, fully recruited fast and also here we are waiting for the results. But um, obviously um, the advantage of the Akala and venetoclax is it's much more convenient for the patients than CD20 antibody infusions. On um, the other hand, um, when we have young patients um, with respect who wish to have very long lasting remissions, um, MID rates with acalabrutinib plus venetoclax were relatively low, particularly low in comparison to venetoclax obinutuzumab um, and seem to be, if you would like to do a cross-trial comparison, also a little bit lower than ibrutinib venetoclax. Um, therefore, though in the Amplify study evaluating acalabrutinib venetoclax, more fit patients were included, but I personally would consider acalabrutinib venetoclax more in an unfit elderly patient population for whom it is not so convenient to come for the obinutuzumab infusions frequently to the clinic. With respect to the triple combination, the AVO combination, certainly um, due to the uh, to, to the relatively high rate of COVID deaths and that treatment arm, but the study recruited during the pandemic, most of the patients, 90%, were not vaccinated before, but still this shows that obviously there's a severe immune suppression with the AVO regimen. Um, on the other hand, we do really see a high efficacy with the triplet regimen, regimen and um, for example, patients with TP53 aberration, so they were excluded from this trial, could be candidates for using this triplet combination. We are currently investigating that in the CL16 trial.
The next uh, question is from Dr. Kerry Rogers from Ohio State. Uh, she's asking, with two fixed duration options now available for frontline CLL venetoclax or venetuzumab or BTK inhibitor venetoclax, how do you decide between those two treatment options? Which patient groups do you favor for one over the other? Um, yeah, so when we look at um, the two subgroups of patients with mutated and unmutated IG3 status, uh, we do see that in particular patients with a mutated IG3 status have very long um, progression free survival rates in the CL14 trial for the elderly patients. Um, after six years, 75% around of the patients are still without a relapse, and also now in the Gaia CL13 trial, um, after five years, 80% of the patients in this subgroup are without a relapse. Therefore, I um, personally think, again, doing cross-trial comparison, since we do not have the head-to-head -head comparison, and that these patients in particular benefit from the CD20 antibody plus venetoclax. For the unmutated patients, I think it really um, depends. It's hard to tell. It could be that patients with lymph adenopathy benefit more from the combination of the BTK inhibitor plus BCL2 inhibitor. Um, for example, um, and I would um, discuss that with the patients in the absence yet of data from the head-to-head -head comparison, how convenient it is for the patient to come to the clinic, having the controls, and then finally also um, considering the immunosuppressive effect of the CD20 antibody in case the patient had a history of um, several infections, severe infections, I would consider this patient rather for the double oral combination than administering a CD20 antibody. Body. The next question also from Kerry Rogers is while the data is still developing, what second line options do you think will be best after initial therapy with BTK inhibitor venetoclax um, combination? Yeah, that's a very difficult but important question because that's of course, of course what patients are asking for. So from the Captivate trail here at the EHA study, um, we have now with a new update and data being presented on 36 patients receiving relapse treatment. Um, 24 of them around receiving a continuous treatment with abrutinib and 12 or so with the co again with a combination of abrutinib plus venetoclax. Um, the response was quite good in those patients. So in two of those patients now um, BCL2 mutation which is not yet has not yet been reported, which is not yet known that this is really resulting in resistance. So obviously that's a big disadvantage on the double oral combinations that, uh, that we have a lack of data here for the relapse treatment options and how effectively um, pa patients respond. Um, however, at least for venetoclax obinituzumab, we don't see BCL2 mutations in relapse situation, at least at the um, last data cutoff already a few years ago. In general, as I would suggest we will not see many patients becoming refractory with this time-limited treatment, but certainly this is a risk where we have to inform patients about. And then another question is, which patients do you think are best treated with continuous BTKI monotherapy? Um, um, according, for example, to the ESMO guidelines, this would still be the first treatment of preference for patients with TP50C mutation um, or deletion 17P, since it seems that um, progression-free survival rate, when we compare those across the clinical trials, is still better with um, continuous treatment with the BTK inhibitors. That is the one group. The other one which may be considered are patients of older age, um, for whom it is really difficult to come frequently to the physician's office um, that they may benefit, for example, from continuous treatment with the second generation of BTK inhibitors and um, for having disease, good, good, good disease control but do not necessarily achieve undetectable MED rates. Thank you very much for listening to Ask the Expert and warm regards here from Milan.